Polynomials are everywhere in maths. The symbol to write just powers of x with some coefficients. And usually when we look at polynomials, we try to find the roots, the x values where the polynomial equals zero. For quadratics, it's easy. We have the famous quadratic formula. For cubics, it gets a little messier. And for quartics, it's worse still. Beyond that, there is no concrete formula to work out the roots of polynomials with degrees higher than 4. But in 1867, an Austrian engineer named Eduard Lille came up with a beautiful visual method for solving these equations, a method which seems to have been forgotten by most. Let's go through it. Let's start with a cubic x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. First, we write the coefficients in order. Then, we record the direction, start facing right, then after each coefficient, rotate 90 degrees anti-clockwise. First coefficient is 1. Draw a line segment with length 1 in the current direction. The next coefficient is minus 6. The direction is now upwards, but since the coefficient is negative, we draw the line going down from the previous one. We keep going, changing the direction each time until we finish drawing the line corresponding to the final coefficient, in this case, minus 6. Now comes the magic. Imagine shooting a laser from the starting point at some gradient. Now, when this laser hits any walls, our lines we drew earlier, it reflects off, but always at 90 degrees, until it has hit the final line. Keep an eye on this green segment here. The solution to our equation appears when that becomes zero. The roots are the negative values of the gradients at these points, so we get one as our first solution. If we keep changing the gradient, we find another solution at x equals 2. And the final solution at x equals 3. Isn't that amazing how a few lines acting like lasers lead us to solutions which are normally found with long, complicated formulae? But nothing's complete without a proof. So here it is. Let's rewrite our initial equation, but reverse the order of the terms. Now notice that the last three have a common factor of x. We can then rewrite it as follows. Keep repeating this process until the last term. And you get a specific form of the polynomial known as its Horner form. Here it is for a more general cubic, and keep this in mind because we'll need it later. Here's an even more general form for any polynomial if you're interested. So, back to our diagram. Let's label the sides a, b, c and d for each of the coefficients of the cubic. Notice these three triangles. At first glance, you might think these triangles are similar, and you would be right meaning the corresponding angles are all equal. Let's isolate just one of these triangles with side length A and angle theta. Trigonometry tells us that tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Rearranging, we can write the opposite side in terms of the adjacent side and the angle. This comes in handy with the rest of the method. We can now start labeling the lengths of some of the segments. This one, as we just worked out, was A tan theta. The one underneath is the length of the whole vertical line, B, minus that small segment, A tan theta. We now have an angle and adjacent side, 
so we can label the length of the opposite side as the tangent of the angle multiplied by the adjacent side. If we keep going till we reach the green segment, we find that its length is equal to this. Look familiar? Let's look back at the Horner form we had earlier. If we replace the negative tan theta with x, it reveals that the length of that green segment, when we launch the laser at some angle theta, is equal to the original polynomial evaluated at x. If we reduce this length down to zero, we get the x values for which the polynomial is zero, which gives us the roots we were after. Let's analyze what this negative tan theta really means though. The tangent of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent, which in the case of the small triangle is the negative change in y over change in x. In other words, the negative of the gradient. And that's Lille's method, a beautiful crossover between algebra and geometry. When we apply Lil's method to quadratics, it turns out we can make use of a clever technique to help us find our solutions. Let's start with the quadratic x squared plus 5x plus 4 and draw the diagram as before. Next, draw a circle with the start and end points of the diagram as its diameter. Now, we can make use of a famous circle theorem, which states that the angle in a semicircle is always 90 degrees, a theorem which some of you may be familiar with already. Applying this to the diagram, we find that any point on the circle which connects to the start and end points of the diagram forms a right angle. And this is exactly what we need for our laser. Reflect at 90 degrees and reach the end point. The solutions we are after lie at the points where this circle intersects the second line of the Lille diagram, which, in this case, occur at gradients of 1 and 4. Of course, the solutions are the negative values of the gradient, so we get x equals minus 1 and x equals minus 4, which are both the roots of the original equation. But that's not all. The true beauty of Lil's method is that it can, in fact, also be used to get complex roots. Yes, that's right. We can get complex roots of a quadratic using nothing but straight lines and circles. Take the equation x squared minus 4x plus 5 and, if you like, verify by whatever method that it indeed has no real roots. The roots of this equation are actually 2 plus or minus i. Complex roots always come in conjugate pairs. Let's draw the initial diagram again in the same way as before. I've added a number plane this time to hopefully make it easier to follow along with the constructions. Clearly, using the circle method from before does not work, as there are no points of intersection with the second line. So, here's how it's done. Take the midpoint of that second line and draw a perpendicular going all the way across. Copy the initial line from the diagram and move it to the end of the second line, making sure it is in the opposite direction to the third line. Now, take this line segment and draw a circle with that as its diameter. Extend the second line in both directions. This should intersect the newly drawn circle at two points. Pick any one of these. I'll go with the bottom one. Now, look at the length between the end of the second line, shown as a red dot, and the point we just found. Draw another circle with the center at the red point and passing through the blue one. Almost there. 
Notice that this new circle intersects the initial perpendicular we drew at two points. Believe it or not, there are our solutions. Take this length and label it A. Also make a note of these two lengths here. The real part of the solution is the vertical distance between the perpendicular and the initial line, in this case 2, divided by A, which is just 1 in this example. Similarly, the imaginary part is this horizontal distance, in this case 1, divided by A, and there are the solutions, 2 plus or minus I. Amazing, right? Finding complex roots with pure geometry. We can take this even further and move on to cubics. As complex roots always come in conjugate pairs, cubics can either have one real root and two complex roots, which are conjugates of each other, or three real roots, including repeated roots. So we should always be able to find at least one root using the Lil diagram. Take this equation, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 9. Again, we draw the Lil diagram. We set an initial gradient and see where it lands on the final line, keeping an eye on that green segment. As we change the gradient, we see that a gradient of minus 3 works, giving a solution of x equals 3. But if we keep going, it seems as if we will never reach another solution, as the green section keeps getting further from 0. This is an example of a cubic with just one real root. Let's solve it. We can rewrite the cubic polynomial in its factorized form, as shown below, which is consistent with x equals 3 being a solution. To find the other two solutions, we need to solve the quadratic factor when it is equal to 0. Let's start by labeling some lengths. This segment has length 1 and this one has length 3. By Pythagoras, we find that the length of the first red laser ray is the square root of 10. Do the same for the other rays of the laser until we have all three lengths. Notice anything? If we ignore the blue lines and focus only on the red laser rays, we can rotate it and see that it looks awfully similar to a little diagram. In fact, it is just a scaled up version of the diagram that corresponds to the quadratic factor. And we already know how to solve these. Doing so gives the three solutions x equals 3 and 3 over 2 plus or minus root 3i over 2. But how do we know which angle to draw the rays at? The answer lies in the unexpected world of origami. Yes, as crazy as it sounds, we can fold paper to help us solve cubic equations. I've redrawn the diagram from before, slightly scaled down, and added two straight lines. The vertical line is the same distance away from the diagram as the length of the first coefficient, in this case, 1. The horizontal line is the same distance away from the diagram as the length of the last coefficient, in this case, 9. Now, this takes a bit of visual thinking. Imagine this drawn on a piece of paper and folding the paper along the second ray line. 
think about where the two red points will land. They will, in fact, both land on one of the dotted lines. To help with the visualization, I've dipped into the world of 3D for a bit. Hopefully, this makes it clearer. But how does this help find the solutions? We can work backwards, starting with no rays and just the little diagram and dotted lines. Imagine all of this on a piece of paper. Then fold the paper such that the two red dots both land on their respective lines. The crease that is created, shown here as a green dotted line, corresponds exactly with the second laser ray. We can then fill in the rest of the diagram. And there's our solution, gradient of minus 3, x equals 3, exactly the same as before, calculated with origami. And there you have it, Lil's method. A beautiful way of using circles, lasers and origami to solve polynomials, even going as far as finding complex solutions with a single piece of paper. So next time you see a polynomial, don't just think formulas, think geometry. Think rays and zigzags, circles and intersections. Lil's algorithm never became a mainstream tool. It's not practical compared to modern computation, but has a window into the hidden beauty of algebra and geometry working together, it's unforgettable. If you'd like to explore some of these diagrams further, I've added a few Desmos links below. Play around with the sliders and gradients and see how many different paths you can get. And who knows, maybe drawing pictures really is a good way to understand equations.